All right, good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, February 8th, and we are here getting ready to get rolling. Hope our 30 as usual. Uh, you see behind me, I have a different truck. I'm going to be using a different truck today because yesterday I sprung a leak in my differentials on my second boat out there in the Sunbury. So uh, I'm going to bring it back here and call it an early day. So today I'm going to be running this white map, uh, and we'll see how this goes. The guy who usually runs it fell at one of the wells and uh, bruised his hip, so he's out for a week. So the uh, truck's open, so I'm going to use it today. So. All right, we're going to get going here shortly, and uh, we'll film stuff along the way for you guys. All right, so once again, we are down here at our favorite spot, loading. And uh, as you can see behind me, it is a bit foggy and uh, it's about 25 degrees outside so that is freezing fog and if you look let's see a pan around behind me here you can see a bit of white on the trees it's because the fog is freezing to the trees it's kind of freezing to everything the cars are white and everything else but uh snow start to melt as you can see um you got some grass showing but it's taken a while we get a little bit warmer uh, Yesterday was 40. Today's going to be about 35. Tomorrow going to be about 45. Um, so we're starting to melt this snow off, thank goodness. Uh, it's been on the ground for a month. We haven't got much of it. Uh, only about 3, 4, 5 inches. But it just stuck around so long because it was so cold it never had a chance to melt. I mean, even the sun wouldn't melt it. And, you know, and The highs are only 20 degrees, 15, 20 degrees, 25 degrees out. And the sun doesn't do a whole lot of good, especially when it's pretty much more ice than snow which is what it was because we had freezing rain events instead of fall and snow events so but it's starting to melt and hopefully uh, we can melt the rest of it off and it'll stay gone for a while before we get another snowstorm I know it's only February 8th and we're gonna get more snow There's no two ways about that but it'd be nice to get rid of what we got first before we get more so anyway we're loading down here we got our daylight now and we'll uh, do some GoPro footage for you along the way we got three stops today. We've got one here from uh, Tower City up to Sunbury, and then we got to come back to Tower City and grab one and take that down there to Allentown, and then turn around and head north and grab one and take that back to Allentown. That'll be our three loads for the day. So uh, hopefully we find something interesting to shoot along the way. As you know, I'm struggling here of late trying to make these videos interesting because it's just the same route over and over again. It's boring the hell out of me, um, and it's just hard to talk about stuff. So. Anyway, we're loading, and uh, we'll talk to you once we hit the road. All right, so we are loaded and rolling, and the sun is trying to burn through this fog this morning, as you can see. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but that frost on these trees looks pretty cool. It's all white. Now we'll see how this truck does pulling out from here. Um, and I have never driven this truck before, so I don't know what it's going to be like anything coming and oh, all they're back far enough not bad not bad at all now we get going here Let's see what the temperature is there's a thermometer right here uh, ahead of us 25 degrees 8 a.m. 25 degrees that's why the freezing frost See all these trees up here are white. <laughs> Creates an interesting contrast. Uh, hope the camera's picking it up. I really can't tell. Um, they call that hoar frost. H-O-A-R, not uh, the other way. <laughs> um, it's called hoar frost, and you get that when you get freezing fog, and all the trees have a white, uh, kind of mossy ice look to them pretty cool it doesn't happen all the time like I said only when you get freezing fog when you just get regular frost you, the trees don't usually look like this um, so yeah, kind of cool look this morning a little different but anyway we just beat this school zone by two minutes yeah, 8 a.m. Those lights are going to be blinking and we'd have to slow down to 15 mile an hour, but according to the truck it says it's 7.58 and those lights weren't blinking yet. So 
we're able to roll right on through here so we're on 209 we just left tower city heading over here to lichens and we'll go past lichens oh hey they just turned on now we just made it <laughs> uh we'll go to lichens through lichens and uh and then we'll take our shortcut road and head on up to sunbury and deliver this first one all right coming up on route 25 intersection here by this farmer's market that's open on fridays um i always like the view here kind of always a nice view once you cross this intersection you're on kind of a top of a hill and you drop down into a valley and and you come out by pillow and i am going to let this guy go first i think he's going to go first anyway <laughs> but anyway I said I always like the view especially when the sun's out and at your back this first run of the morning is always nice here look up at that cut in the mountains and across the farmland here a lot of Amish I'll show you there's an Amish house up here on the right uh, down around the bend I know there are, it's an Amish house because I oftentimes see the buggy and the horses out. And uh, they usually hang their laundry out to dry, even on cold mornings like this. If it's laundry day, it's usually out to dry because that's the only way they dry it. They don't have electricity to run a dryer. So um, try and get it out in the sun and air dry it. But not this house yet. Down just a little bit further probably others that I don't know about but this gray house on the right right here you see the black roof there um, yeah nice complex nice barn and horse stables there nothing's out nothing's uh, open right now yet but that that yeah there's an Amish farm right there to our right and every once in a while as you've seen in my past videos they'll be out going to market or going doing whatever they're doing and you get behind one on this road and have to slow down and wait for an opportunity to pass them which isn't easy once you get down here into these uh, bends but all in all I still like the run it just like I said it just bores the living daylights out of me doing the same thing every day and I miss going to different places every day so it remains to be seen where the future lies but for now it is what it is We're rolling right along here and ever since we got to Herndon we've been pacing this train here and we're moving just a little bit faster than him he's doing about 50 mile an hour speed limit on here is 55 and that's about what we're doing so we gaining a little ground on him I'd like to try and find locomotives if I can I was hoping I'd catch them right about here for a little bit of an interesting shot but um, still we got the train over there so that's kind of cool this truck seems to have a little bit more power than uh, the red one that I drive and we'll find out after we get out of these uh, curves here there's a formidable little hill up ahead of us that we got to pull and we'll see how we pull it with, with the red truck at anywhere between 25 and 28 mile an hour by the time I get up to the top so we'll see what happens uh, with this one we get a couple extra miles an hour out of it but it just seems like it has a little more uh, power to it a little more horsepower or, I don't know maybe it just uh, the fuel filters are cleaner I don't know what it is but even when they change the fuel filters in that red truck it's just a dog I think everybody beat that truck nobody uh, really ever claimed that truck as their own it always seemed to be a spare truck and nobody took care of it so Nobody wanted it because of how rough it rode. So I think it became a spare and everybody used it when their trucks broke down. Nobody took care of it and it just kind of got pretty beat. I tried to clean it up and make it look nice and stuff, but, you know, that's about the extent of it. Uh, let's see what we do at this hill. This is the hill I'm talking about. Uh, it's a kind of a short and sweet, but it pulls you down. Like I said, up the top, I'm usually doing about 25, 27, 28 mile an hour, depending on how I can hit it. it. Might 
be about the same here. Thirty-four right now. Thirty-three. Thirty-two. Thirty-one. Thirty. Nope, it wouldn't have had the downshift there, it would have held, but 28 was the lowest. Now we're back up to 31. Yeah, when I got a downshift right up at the top there, I'm about 25 mile an hour. So, yeah, you get about three more mile an hour out of this thing. Now, let's see, once we come through these hills here, we'll kind of parallel those train tracks again. Let's see if I can catch those locomotives or not. There's the train. Mm, there's one waiting on the bridge too. <laughs> Our railroad activity right now here. Oh, there are the locomotives. I don't know if I'm gonna catch them or not. They're up here ahead of us. May as well leave the camera on. I think we're going to. We're going a little bit faster than he is. I found the head end. There they are. Might be in a good spot too to see them. So we do some rail pacing. Too bad I can't put the camera on the swivel. And you'd see them a little better. There they are. Three GE units. Oh no, one's an EMD, SD70. And there we go. All right, next stop, Sunbury. Well, it was supposed to be a mostly sunny day, and when we started out and the fog was burning off, I thought it was going to be, but uh, right now it's pretty overcast. Maybe when we get to Allentown, it'll be better, or even over by Tower City, but out here just north of Pillow, um, it's pretty solid overcast and kind of gray. So I don't know. Uh, Somebody missed something because the forecast said mostly sunny. At least for my backyard. Maybe maybe the eastern part of the state was going to be sunny and the central part was going to be a little bit more cloudy. And that may be the case. But um, I was kind of expecting a, a brilliant sunshine today. Not uh, almost solid overcast. But anyway... We delivered that first one and now we're rolling on to get the second one and then take that to Allentown and, and then from there we'll go get the third one as I told you earlier. But we're just cruising along out here on Stay Route 225 and like I said we were just north of Pillow so uh, I guess we'll show you the little town of so We just crossed over from Northumberland County into Dauphin County and we're entering the town of Pillow. And I've showed it to you before, but I figured I'd show it to you again since this is pretty much all we do. It's temperature here, 33, and the truck thermometer says 34, so we're pretty close. Only these houses weren't here I could see if something was coming up this road because I don't have to stop unless somebody's coming <laughs> so anyway once again take you through the town of Pillow Real small town, kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but part of our route. So I get to go through here every day of the week. Anyway, we'll talk to you, I guess, over there while we're getting that second All right, load. so we are loaded up here. We are done. All we have to do is unhook the hose and put everything away and get going down to Allentown. Uh, so far, so good today. First load went really well. Uh, didn't have to wait up there. Got unloaded real quick. 
got back down here with no traffic and everything is going well so far we'll see what happens when we get down to allentown sometimes things slow down down there and uh we have to sit and wait so hopefully that's not the case and hopefully we can get in and get out and we'll get our third load and go down there and the same thing uh get in and get out and not have to sit and wait but uh it's a 50 50 deal usually sometimes you can get in there and the silos have enough room and you can unload right away and sometimes uh they're full and you gotta wait and it's one at a time with the truck so we'll see what happens when we get there i guess all right, so high noon and we are in Fogelsville. We're getting off 78 here. Our exit's coming up, Route 100. We're gonna go by to Samuel Adams Brewery here. We're gonna be on the right-hand side. It used to be uh, Stroh's Brewery and before that, back in the 70s, it was Schaefer Brewery. Schaefer, I don't think is uh, anymore, and neither is Stroh's. But is now Samuel Adams Boston Lager and whatever else they make there but we're gonna be getting off here at this exit and follow Allen distribution here only about a mile from our delivery at this point we gotta get off on 100 go down a couple traffic lights and then we'll be where we need to be. Let's hope it's not too difficult to get out here. Um, depending on how traffic is, is, before the construction zone, this used to just be a yield that you'd come out and merge on the Route 100, but since they've got it all under construction now, it's a stop sign and it makes things difficult to get out. You see ECM is sitting up there now and you got a line of traffic and see how long it takes him to get out. You know? This is one of those um, if you've got a halfway decent brake, you don't come to a complete stop. You just kind of get going here. And it looks like we're going to have a good brake, so we'll stop. Or we'll almost stop. There we go. Yeah, we had a really nice brake to come out this time. That was good. And get right over in the left lane as soon as possible because we're going to need it down the road. And we don't get in it right away we may not get in it at all not everybody is cooperative you put the left turn signal on and want to come over here and everybody tightens things up on you and then make it difficult for you I'm not saying the truckers it's the four-wheelers that like to do that because they don't want to be behind you so as soon as that left turn signal comes on they gas on it and close the gap so you can't get in <laughs> but anyway this one's a pretty quick light here. But yeah, this is all under construction. They're probably not gonna finish it up until next year. Oh, they an arrow over there. And a couple of people making a left was enough to trip that arrow. Normally, uh, you just get going right away when the other side gets going, but a few people were turning. And that should give us a little extra. When we get down there, we won't have to wait so long at that light, hopefully. I don't believe this is the final coat of blacktop either. And then we're going to jump one more lane because we want to stay left because we got to make a left turn not at this traffic light but the next traffic light. thought it would time out pretty good but there's so much truck traffic that comes off this Shantz Road that uh, it's a pretty long light for them to clear the traffic off of that road it should change here very soon though nope, now that side's got to go I forgot about that yeah <sighs> nope, there we go I didn't think it would take too long. But it's nothing but industrial parks down here. There's nothing but a lot of trucks. And it stretches out the waiting queue at these traffic lights a little bit. So we are almost there. I said next traffic light, make it left. 
And then go a little bit, make another left, and then we're in the property. And I can't film in there, so uh, I'm gonna turn the camera off here and uh, go do our delivery and then head on up and grab that third load. All right, so we're here loading the third one. And uh, I was hoping we'd get done quicker, but um, it took a while down there to unload that second one that we took in. Uh, an hour and a half from the time I got in the gate till the time I left the gate but that was because the silos were full and I was the fourth truck back and it was one at a time unloading so each truck takes about 20 minutes to unload so figure it out it's 20 40 60 that was an hour and then a half hour for me so hopefully it's better this time around uh, it seems like it might be because it was getting a little bit quicker each time uh, truck emptied out it was less time in between so hopefully uh, they added another line or two and the silos have uh, emptied out a little bit and there's room when we get there we can just uh, get in there get sampled and uh, unloaded quick and get home because it's three o'clock right now and I should have been home um, if everything went the way it was supposed to go and everything uh, would have got in and out of there I probably would have been down there unloading right now with my third one instead of up here loading the third one so that's uh, how it went and some days are good and some days aren't so good I kind of told you guys that before and you just roll with the punches and take it as it comes but it would have been nice if we could have gotten an early quit today but oh well I guess we'll finish about our normal time which isn't bad when you think about it as long as uh, we don't have to sit down there and wait on this one too so. but anyway uh, we'll do a little more GoPro footage for you before we pack everything up and uh, head home for the night all right we are loaded another 6,200 gallons of water going to its customer all we got to do is get out of here and get down to the main road and it should take us about 35 40 minutes to get there and uh, hopefully we'll be in better shape than we were the last time uh, hopefully we can get in and right back, uh, get in and get right back out if we can't we can it is what it is like I said you know, just uh, got to deal with what circumstance gives you. Not much you can do about it. Some of the guys get wound up and all tight when they got to sit and wait. It just, it is what it is, you know. You, you just have to deal with it and wait your turn and get unloaded and then either go for your next load or finish out the day or whatever the case may be. It's all there is to it. So, but we are on our way. And this is probably one of the nicer loading facilities that we have. I really like coming into this one. Not because it's a short ride to the customer, but just because it's state of the art. It's the most state of the art uh, loading facility that we have. And it's really nice to come in there and load. Plenty of room to work with. And uh, everything's modern and up to date. So I kind of like coming up here to this one don't get there as much as I'd like to but <laughs> well as luck would have it we're sitting here again um, nothing got better between the two loads so uh, we're sitting down here we ain't gonna get home till after dark probably the way it's looking so <laughs> uh, the guy there to my left in the blue truck he just started unloading now and I got him to wait on and then I got one to my right to wait on and then it'll be my turn at least I'm on the pad when I got here I had parked across the way and wait to get on the pad but now I'm on the pad now it's just a matter of waiting to get unloaded so it's gonna probably be uh after dark till I get home tonight which I haven't done for quite a while so uh it's gonna be a long one I'll talk to you uh on the way up dark light whatever we'll do one more GoPro segment for you guys and uh all right so we are finally empty it is 608 and like I said it would be uh getting home in the dark I didn't realize that we'd be leaving in the dark well I guess I kind of did but uh, yeah it's not too often I sit down there till uh, it gets dark out and then head home <laughs> so it's been an interesting night so far or interesting day it started out really good that first load uh, went off without a hitch went down there got loaded up took it where we needed to go and uh, got unloaded right away and was on my way and then 
that was the end of that. So, here we sit. Heading home at 6.09 p.m. Now, where's that guy going? Oh, yeah, he's just coming down the wrong side. Yeah, he's going the wrong way. I wonder how that's going to work out for you down further. That's the left turn lane for this side. He just shot straight across the intersection. <laughs> oh, man. Now he's got to get turned around. I don't know what he was thinking there. Anyway. We got about a half hour to 40 minute ride depending on traffic. Now let's see if this light here stays green. It usually doesn't. By the time that, yep. I was say, you, you can't get this light green if you're sitting at that one red. <coughs> And there's a cop. Where's he going? Maybe he's after that uh, one that went the wrong way. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so anyway. He said, I don't know if I'm going to do a closing segment up there at the uh, yard or if I'm just going to close it out here uh, between this light and the Tillman Street light. Uh, it ended up being a long day. We waited an hour and a half on that uh, second load, first one that came down here. And then on this one we waited, uh, I got there at 345, 45, uh, two and a half hours. So it actually got longer. The wait time was longer on the third load than it was on the second load. Oh, we're done and we're heading home. A little later than I expected or wanted, but we're heading home. Alright, so we're finally parked for the day, 6.45 p.m. So 12 hours and 45 minute uh, day we had today, all for three loads. So, we finished up the paperwork. All I got to do is run my... Uh, torch and hammer back to my truck because I don't know which one I'm going to use on Thursday when I come back out after my vacation day tomorrow um, so we're going to put it in my truck and if I need it then uh, I'll get it back out and put it back in this truck or whatever truck I'm going to use but um, that's it I'm going to take the paperwork in and head home and get some supper talk to you in the next one